Good day, Master. I'm ready when you are. Hey, Alfred. I'm going to London for a business trip for three days from June first. Could you help me find a nice Airbnb, please? Ah, London in June. Let's hope the weather behaves itself, Master. I'll see what I can conjure up for an Airbnb. Right, Master. I've located a few Airbnbs for your consideration. There's a room in Wembley Park for forty-seven pounds a night. Another in Central London for forty pounds. One in Highbury also for forty pounds. A studio in Barnet for sixty-seven pounds. And lastly, a double room in a Victorian house for thirty-four pounds. They seem to have decent ratings and locations. Does any of that strike your fancy, or should I refine the search? Okay, thanks, Alfred. Just pick the one that is closest to the Heathrow Airport by searching the map, please. Of course, Master. Though one does wonder if you intend to conduct your business at Heathrow itself, let's see which of these is closest to the airport. One single room in Wembley Park is the closest to Heathrow at approximately twenty kilometers. Will that do, Master, or shall we explore other options in that area? Okay, thanks, Alfred. Now, just please send me an email to graysonhyc@gmail.com with the Airbnb link, please. Very well, Master. Though I do hope you're not expecting me to handle the packing as well. Sending an email with the Airbnb link now. The email has been dispatched, Master. Is there anything else I can assist you with at the moment? Okay, very good, Alfred. Now please finally create a calendar event for the business trip for me, please. Of course, Master. Though I do hope this business trip proves more fruitful than the last. I'll set up a calendar event for you now. The calendar event has been created, Master. The dates are set from June first to June fourth. Anything else I can help you with? No, that's all good. Thank you, Alfred. Glad I could assist with your travel preparations, Master. Have a safe and productive trip. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the demo. So just a quick explanation of what's happening under the hood. Now we see on the left hand side we have our front end interface, which is showing us Alfred. And in Batman's movie, it was his most loyal butler, and now became our powerful assistant. And on the right hand side. It is our AI agent system in the backend, which then connects to a different diverse set of tools and MCP servers. Now we're able to connect both together using web request and response, and more importantly, the conversational AI interface by Eleven Labs, which allows us to provide a seamless communication between a user and Alfred. Okay, so just back to the example I showed you guys in the demo. When I asked Alfred, "Can you find me some Airbnb options in London?" It is able to correctly trigger the MCP tool from Airbnb. And then, which allows us to get some Airbnb options. And later on, when I ask Alfred again, "Can you find me the option that is closest to Heathrow Airport?" It then triggers the search API, or sometimes the Google Maps MCP server, to do a bunch of options like calculate distance and so on, and return me the most optimal choice. And lastly, when I ask Alfred to send me an email reminder and also create a calendar event, it's also able to trigger the correct tool, which gives us this email with a nice summary and the Airbnb link. And also this calendar event with the title, location, and description. I'm going to break down how I build this application from end to end in just a sec. But before that, just a quick reminder that all these resources you see in the demo, including the system prompts and the templates, are all available for 100% free in my school community. And you can find the link in the video description down below. Okay, so let's dive into that. I'm able to build this application with a chain of three different tools. The first one is Build.new, which is used to create the web application with a bad computer theme-like interface and talk to Alfred. And then the second tool is Eleven Labs, which is used to create a conversational AI agent, which then mimics the Alfred-like conversation. And thirdly, we have Anyn, which is doing all the heavy lifting in the backend with two calling and MCP server connections. And the best part is, all these tools are no-code tools, which means they are super user-friendly. And no matter if you are professional or a complete beginner, you should be able to follow them. Now I walk you through step by step on how I use these tools to create Alfred. I'll first start with Build.new. If you haven't heard of Build.new, it's basically like an AI code generator before web applications. It then allows us to create web applications with a single prompt. Now let's go back to my conversation history here, and here it is how I get started. So for the web application design itself, I started off with a prompt, just telling Build.new how I want the user interface to be like. So design a futuristic Batcave themed user interface, which a bunch of details on how Alfred looks like and how the background is like, and just give it an overall vibe of the application for it to better judge. Now, as usual, the first prompt it's usually not perfect, and I have to follow up with different fixes requests. 
and more importantly, it didn't actually have the ability to create the image, and I have to Google an image on however it looks like, and I think I got this image from a video game source, and then just use it as it is for showing it on the monitor. And then the next step, I just kind of fixing some of the position of the images and with a bunch of other UI minor adjustments. And then the second important part is the 11 labs widget you see at the bottom right corner. So how I'm able to do this is that from the conversational AI interface from 11 labs, I'm able to embed a single line of code, which then allows us to connect to this AI agent from 11 labs from the front end. So here, as you can see here, I just kind of ask bow.new to just copy and paste there and then ask it to plug it to the Alfred display and then it successfully just plug this bottom right widget to me. And then I follow up with a bunch of other things and then this is how I got the interface. Very sleek, very nice. And then one more good thing about bow.new is also allows you to switch to the code tab, which if you have developer experience, you can quickly do some editing and just do some quick edits for that to get your desired result. And there is more options here as well, like setting the visibility of the projects, doing integrations of Stripe Superbase if you want to scale that, export the code and also deploy it to an actual server. So this is how Bo.new is looking like. Okay, so now the second part is about 11 labs. And I'm going to talk about three things. The first thing is the widget front end. The second thing is how I got Alfred's voice by cloning it. And then the third thing is the conversational AI logic itself. Let's start with the widget. So basically in the widget tab here, you're able to configure a bunch of different things, like whether you want this appearance to be full or compact, you can provide a background color, text color, and things like that. And more importantly, to make it more seamlessly embedding to the user interface we have with Alfred, I also added this Batman operator just to make, like, make it look like I'm Batman, I'm calling it from my bad computer, for example. And then you can also customize the text from the button and then the end call button here. So I just set it to call Alfred. And then for the end button, I just set it to the default one. Okay, second thing, if I go back to the home here and then instant voice clone is basically how I get Alfred's voice. And if you can see here, it basically just required 10 seconds of the audio to get the, you know, to get a clone. So what I did is that I just like go to YouTube and then play a clip where Alfred is talking with Batman from the Batman movie. And then I record it with my phone's voice and then I just like uploaded this file. And then it just gave me like a fresh British, British accent, which is kind of mimicking how the actual actor from Batman who is acting Alfred is talking. Okay, now if I go back to the conversational agent here and then looking at the agent that I set, I'm able to now select the voice that I just cloned or you can also choose other different voices which is built in 11 labs or just clone your own voice um, for a testing purpose. Okay, now going back to agent here, you can you are able to select agent language, which I just use English in my use case, and also you are able to provide the first message, which is the first message message that Alfred will talk to you. So as you can see in a demo, it's always going to be good day, master. I'm ready where you are. The next piece, which is super important, is the system prompt itself, which then kinds of kind of like uh, determining how Alfred's personality and how its responses and also the actual two calling logic on how it behaves. So as you can see here, I always like kind of prompt the AI agent to execute user's request with any end tool and also just telling a little bit how Alfred personality is like, for example, like ever faithful, composed British Butler, and then with a bunch of other abilities uh, in bullet points and also behavioral guidelines. Now there are other bunch of additional options you can set here as well. For example, selecting the model which is used for the LM logic and also configuring the temperature, which then just kind of controls the creativity or randomness from the AI agent response from the conversation and also a whole bunch of different add-on features like using a knowledge base and tools. And now these option like tools is something what we should look into. So basically it allows us to have an option to trigger a webhook, which is basically connecting to the backend we have in any end with a post request and you're able to select the response timeout, so which gives us store to execute a whole bunch of other um, options on the backend. So now just quickly going through a whole bunch of other options here, you can set voice frequency, stability, speed, similarity, as well as other security and advanced features. 
And lastly, there is also a test AI agent feature here within the 11 labs, which allows you to just test the agent ability and see how it sounds like with 50% off of your API credits. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is that this conversation AI agent is only available from the starter plan, which you will need to load in some API credits, but it's just starting from five bucks from a starter plan. So I really recommend you guys to try this out and it's totally worth it. Okay, now let's go back to the final piece, which is from the backend on NAN. The first very important note here is that I'm using a self-hosted instance of NAN, which allows me to have the ability to install community nodes and also MCP servers locally. Now, if you haven't already know how to use a self-hosted instance of NAN and install the MCP servers, please let me know in the comment below whether I should do a full tutorial on that, and I'm happy to help. Okay, now let's get back to the workflow. So I start by talking about two important nodes here, which is the receiving webhook and the responding webhook. So if I click on the receiving webhook, it basically exposes the webhook URL in two configurations. The first one is test URL, and then the second one is production URL. So we use the test version when we are just kind of testing a workflow by listening for test event, and we use the production URL when we're ready to deploy this and make this workflow active. So going back to the node itself, it also allows us to set a different metadata, such as the HTTP method, the path authentication, and the responding method. So we're just gonna stick to HTTP post here in this request, which allows us to actually send a post request back from 11 labs. As you can see here, I just talk about this. And then together with this request, we can then send a body parameter. And then in this case, I have set a parameter named query and that basically refers to the intent extracted by this conversational AI. And if I use an example, when I talk about booking Airbnb, this conversational AI is then gonna extract this intent and put it in this query string and send it back to NAN. So I just actually use a pin data here to demonstrate how that works. So this is the last request that is extracted by the conversational AI, which is to create a calendar event for a business trip to London from June 1st to June 4th, and then when this NAN received the query, it then gets sent back to the Alfred Tools agent, which then allows us to call a different bunch of tools and MCB servers, and finally trigger this respond to webhook node. So basically this respond is just telling me to respond with the first incoming item back to 11 labs, and then Alfred will process it and then talks to me with a kind of, you know, human languages. The second important thing that we want to look at is the system prompt and the user prompt that is set in the Alfred's agent. So let's look at the system prompt. So basically here is telling, telling the agent to follow some mandatory rules. For example, whenever the agent decides to trigger an MCB tool, it always have to use the list tool function to retrieve all the tool names from the MCB servers and then use the execute tool which with the correct parameter to perform the action. And I also specified a whole bunch of tool selection rules here. Like if Airbnb, then it means that if the query includes the keyword Airbnb, and then it then triggered this tool. And similarly for Google Maps, Gmail, Google Calendar, and SERP API, it has a bunch of different rules to set it. And then the more important thing is also like, I provided this AI agent, the current timestamp, so that it, do, it does actions like scheduling calendar events and also sending emails with correct timestamps. Okay, now this user message is basically it's dragging and dropping this query back here so that it combines the system message and user message here to process um, the request. So now if I go back to this create event here, so before that I need to do a run. And you can see that this is a response from the two with the credentials I've set up. So this is the Google credentials I have. And then I just let the start time, the end time, and some parameters to be automatically defined by the AI. Okay, so let me just explain the rest of the nodes here. The next item is the chat model node, which is basically just for mini here. I chose mini because I want to the AI agent to respond as quickly as possible so that I can have the most conversation experience with Alfred. And then the second thing here, which is also important, is the memory node. So basically, it's like a memory feature and it has a context window length of 10. And as you can see here, this is basically storing all the conversational history from the previous executions. And then it's just telling the agent a contextual awareness of what I'm talking about before. 
So remember when we first ask about Airbnb, it has to extract the meetings and then I have to ask about the locations and then send an email with the link and also the calendar events. So without this memory, we, could, we couldn't achieve this result. So that's why we need to set this up. And then it's a bunch of like other MCB tools like Google Map List tools. And if I execute this one, it just kind of lists out what tools I have from this MCB server. For example, like Maps Geocode and Maps Reverse Geocode, which then gives us the Google Maps capability of determining locations. And similarly for Airbnb, if I execute it, it also gives us like Airbnb search, which search the flat and also the listing details, including ratings, the link, and etc. So this send email to here is basically connecting to my Gmail credentials. And as you can see here, I also automatically determine the subject with the AI. So it has contextual awareness and also the message is also determined by the AI. And lastly, I also connected Alfred with two additional tools, which is calculator and think. So calculator is basically giving the agent mathematical ability, for example, doing addition, subtractions, and multiplications, as well as this anthropic thinking method, which allows the agent to reason through complicated logic. Now, this is basically just a back box of how the agent system works. And you can imagine that if I just keep connecting more tools and more tools, how powerful this can be. So this is basically the end of the workthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, all of these resources and demo are available in my school community, which is linked in the description below. And if you ever run into any issues setting this up, please drop a comment below. I'll assist you one by one. Or you can also go to my school community and start a discussion there. I hope this demo gives you a better insight on how we can chain different no codes two together to create powerful applications. And if you ever want more of this type of content or tutorial, please let me know and share with me and we'll learn together. See you next time.